So, Millie Alcock is super girl. So, she wins out. Uh, Meg Donnelly and her were rumored to be the, the final two in consideration uh, just a couple of days ago. And uh, uh, this was posted, and uh, James Gunn responded saying, This is accurate. Uh, Millie is a fantastically talented young actor, and I'm incredibly excited about her being a part of the DCU. Yes, I first became aware of her in House of the Dragon, and so did I, but I was blown away by her varied auditions and screen tests for Supergirl. She embodies Kara, as envisioned by Tom King and these other two who I don't recall. But this is the big problem right here, is Tom King. Um, you know, because I've got no problem with her playing the role. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen Henry Cavill and Sasha Kai do a Superman, Supergirl, company, especially in a Superman of Steel sequel, taking on Brainiac and that whole thing. And Supergirl would know Brainiac and explain it to him. And stuff like that, her being a babysitter for Lois's baby, you know, and all that sort of thing. It would have been a nice little follow-up, and I think it would have worked well. But... That's Hollywood. Uh, but for Millie Alcock, I uh, was impressed with her in uh, House of the Dragon. And there's some similarities here about the isolation and whatnot and feeling left out. And I, she can totally, she can do it. And uh, that narrative for Supergirl is not bad. James Gunn, I think, went on about, well, I think it was some other interview. But anyway, about, well, this is a Supergirl you've not seen before. And it's like, no, that's not true. I've seen it several times. The New 52 went hard on this aspect of it where Supergirl was very isolated and didn't, she just really had no association with Earth at all. They didn't care for it. And that's like she's in a bad place. Uh, her people were destroyed. She witnesses that. Uh, kal -El didn't. He was an infant. And he grew up on Earth. He fits in with human beings. He understands them better. Uh, for her, it's going to be a struggle. Uh, she gets there, but it's going to be a little tough. And, uh, and then, just recently, uh, which Meg Donnelly was the voice in that uh, animated movie of the Legion of Superheroes, uh, which was really a Supergirl story. The Legion of Superheroes were just the guest stars. <laughs> but it was the same problem. She wasn't fitting in. And a Superman decides uh, to help her out, thinking, well, you know, uh, the Earth in the future, which he had been to, uh, is more akin to what she's used to because of the technology and everything is more advanced and it's like what Krypton was and so she goes there and she has an adventure and all that and uh, a live action take on that would probably be pretty good too not going to get that she's going to go into outer space and do a rip off of True Grit if they continue to follow the influence of Tom King well, which is pretty bad uh, I have no problem with Millie doing this. I think she would, uh, that's a good choice. Um, uh, Megan Donnelly, I was partial to because she had done she had already done the role. <laughs> but then again, that might be one of the reasons why they decided to go with Millie. Who knows? Um, and uh, it, it's similar to what she's done, of course. Albeit, I don't expect her to have a sexual relationship <laughs> with Kal El, <laughs> following the incestuous storylines of House of the Dragon. <laughs> I think they'll leave that out. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, just that aspect of the plot, she could, she, she can handle that and do it. I, I have no doubt about it. It's just I, I'm worried that I see a lot of potential in Millie. I was impressed by her in that show, and I, the danger is that she'd be another talent that's wasted. Uh, if they really are serious about being impressed with Tom King, and I can't imagine why, other than the fact that his mommy's a big wig at Warner Brothers, so that's, a, you know, that's an important thing. Uh, his comics are awful. They tease and pretend like they're these great Alan Moore-esque masterpieces, but they're not. And uh, he, he fooled me once. Uh, he's teamed with great artists. They're, they're top of the line. Uh, but it goes nowhere. And uh, right now he's doing terrible things with Wonder Woman and all that. So it's, he's just an awful uh, source for story. Sorry. Uh, maybe he could try to do better, but so far haven't seen any evidence of that and doesn't seem to want to. So uh, not interesting. 
So Tom King's amazing award winning. Award winning means nothing now. Can you name an award that you respect anymore? Yeah. So Variety says that crypto will be there as well. Now that's interesting, but it's crypto is really Superman's dog. Um, Supergirl has interactions with the dog, loves the cute puppy and all that, but she had a super cat named Streaky. Uh, I, I guess they're not going to do that. Maybe Streaky will show up in the movie. She'll find Streaky or something. Uh, but uh, or, or then again, maybe it's because of the cat from Captain Marvel. They don't want any cats, so she'll get a dog. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, this fan art of the costume is pretty good. That would make a good outfit. Uh, this one, uh, well, you got her depicted really young here. <laughs> this one's probably the best. This looks pretty good. Uh, and I mean, it's similar. Obviously, it's very similar to the one from the TV show. But, you know, that one wasn't bad either. That one's pretty good. So maybe it'll be a little different. But the thing about Supergirl, though, unlike Superman... She's never had a really standard costume. She changed it even in the initial run of Supergirl, you know, throughout the... Well, the main thing was in the 70s that I recall, but of course she was around since, what, uh, 60s? You know, maybe 50s as well. Uh, but uh, eventually she was changing her outfit all the time. And I mean, look, she's female. They like to play with clothes. So... <laughs> Yeah, Superman's like, I'm good. This is this is fine. <laughs> but Supergirl, hey, uh, she's gonna change it up a little here and there, and, and all that. So, yeah, I don't know. You might have where she has a different version of her outfit for each movie she's in, provided this DCU thing uh, works. And that really depends on Superman Legacy to be a smash hit. Uh, and if that happens, then you know everything else will follow in place. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you might see her in different outfits and all that. But the biggest thing, problem here, it's not Millie Alcock. I think she can do this. She can do it uh, very well, even. Uh, it's James Gunn. It's uh, not James Gunn. <laughs> it's James Gunn, uh, if he really believes Tom King is a great source uh, of inspiration for any of the superheroes. Um, if you got to cut him a check because, you know, to please mommy, then uh, fine. Put his name on there, whatever. Uh, but ignore him. Uh, the basic plot and the idea of her feeling isolated and trying to find herself out in space or whatever. Fine, you can do that. Just rewrite it. <laughs> uh, so I think James Gunn could write a better Supergirl story than uh, Tom King. There's others who could do way better than James Gunn, but... But Tom King is not one of them. No. So, uh, best of luck to Millie Alcock. I see a lot of potential in her. I really worry that, yeah, she'll be wasted on this. Uh, but hopefully uh, they will, again, ignore Tom King's uh, influence and uh, uh, do right by her. Uh, and odds are she will make her first appearance in the Superman film. Probably a little more than a cameo, but nevertheless... Uh, that's probably, odds are good on that, I'm sure. Uh, so there you go. There you go. Millie Alcock is the new Supergirl.